I'm Alison Gopnik. I'm a professor of psychology and affiliate professor of philosophy at the University of California, Berkeley. And I was lucky enough to be a co-host with Ken several times on Philosophy Talk and a friend of Philosophy Talk in general. Ken was one of the funniest, most passionate, and most really philosophical philosophers I know. He understood the fundamental thing about philosophy, which was always being critical, always arguing, and yet also always being open to new ideas. Uh, the slogan of philosophy talk, we question everything except your intelligence, that was the essence of what Ken was all about, and we'll miss him terribly. I'm Kwame Anthony Appiah, Professor of Philosophy and Law at NYU. Like all of us, I was devastated to hear of Ken Taylor's untimely death. I've known him as a professional colleague for decades now, and I've always admired his philosophical acuity, his engagement with issues of importance for everyone, inside and outside professional philosophy, which he demonstrated, of course, through his work for Philosophy Talk. He was splendidly skeptical of conventional pieties, believing, I think, that the point of philosophy was to look at the world full on do your best to say honestly what you saw, for better or worse. You'll be sorely missed. This is Susan Schneider from the University of Connecticut. Hi, Ken. Um, I'm talking to you, but you've passed away, and it's terrible. Um, we were just together a few weeks ago. We did a wonderful episode of Philosophy Talk with Josh, and um, I wanted to get together with you again for coffee and I just read your paper on AI which I thought was just so spectacular and then we all just learned that you finished a book which we were all looking forward to. We don't know what comes next but um, I hope there's something and um, I hope you're thinking about deep issues there too. My name is David Livingston Smith professor of philosophy at the University of New England. I knew Ken as a colleague and as a regular contributor to the Philosophy Talk blog. There was something inherently lovable about Ken. When we met at conferences, I would, without thinking twice, put my arm around his broad shoulders as we walked along together. Ken was a kind, generous-spirited and gentle man with a robust sense of reality. He was a formidable philosopher and a powerhouse presenter, incredibly eloquent and incisive. I will miss him greatly, and our profession will be much the poorer for his passing. I'm Janana Snell from Columbia University. I've known Ken since 1996 when I came to Stanford as a postdoc. We became friends almost immediately, had dinner almost once a week for the two years I was there and we stayed friends for all of the years since. Every time you saw Ken, whether it was once a year or once a week, it was always like you had all of him at once. There was a kind of immediacy and a completeness and a satisfyingness about it. And it was so characteristic of him in everything. He never held anything back. He was one of the most alive people I knew. And it seems he was just stopped or arrested mid-step kind of in full motion. For Ken, you were gone far, far too soon, but you leave behind so much love, and I hope you knew how much you were loved. I'm David Eagleman. I'm a neuroscientist at Stanford. Ken was the type of person who was always thrilled to ask questions, and with his intelligence matched only by his enthusiasm, he was a real force of nature. He was an exemplar of the kind of teacher that you want on a campus, and he was a wonderful human being. We're really going to miss him. I'm Rebecca Goldstein. I'm a writer. I knew Ken mostly from being on Philosophy Talk several times. I admired him and what he was doing for philosophy a great deal. His warmth and humor, coupled with his acutely critical intelligence, presented the face of philosophy at its best. This is Michael Lynch from UConn. Ken was a brilliant philosopher of language, but he was also someone who knew how to talk about ideas, you know, without pretension and with a fantastic sense of humor. This is what made it so fun to be on Philosophy Talk with him. He found the humanity, not just in his listeners, but in philosophy itself. I'm Julie Napolin, the author of The Fact of Resonance. 
I've always loved philosophy talk for its impossible premise. We think that philosophy is something that you do alone and in silence, but that's not the case. It's something that we do together. And for me, Ken always embodied that impossible premise. For Ken, there was no problem that couldn't be talked about. He had this rare magnanimity of thought. Philosophy isn't about shutting out everything until you find a place of non-contradiction. It's about letting the world in as much as possible and up to the point that there's no distinction between philosophizing and living. I'm Lynn Terrell from Yukon. I first met Ken in 1986 when he was leaving UNC and I was just arriving. The last time I saw Ken was at his 2017 Pacific APA presidential address. He took that well-deserved honor in stride, not feeding his ego, but as an opportunity to serve an organization crucial to philosophy's future. Ken saw reason as, and I quote, a distributed power resident in a diverse array of localized voices spreading over a sprawling, variegated, ever unfolding landscape. A conversation with Ken never felt like a contest, but rather a talking with, even across serious differences. What a special gift. I'm Jora Dannenberg. I teach philosophy at Stanford. Ken was my colleague and my friend. Ken was such a, an enormous and powerful presence in all of our lives, and I'm going to miss him so much. He was so warm and funny and kind to everybody, uh, and he was also just such an amazing philosopher, such an intellectual force. I learned so much from talking with him about my own work, about just about every other part of philosophy from listening to the radio show over the years. Uh, I just can't say enough how, how much of a loss it is to have to say goodbye to him. My name is Anna Saraman Green Quedens. I'm in the Stanford Philosophy Department and I've known Ken since I came in 2011. Ken was a terrific colleague and human being. Academia can be pretty cold, but Ken was not. He was so open-minded and so open-hearted. And he was a wonderful philosophical sparring partner, so much fun and so stimulating to argue with. I'm so grateful to him and to have known him and endlessly sad that he's gone. This is Neil Van Leeuwen. I've been a part of Philosophy Talk for almost as long as I've been a philosopher. I was first director of research for Philosophy Talk and I was really close with Ken there. And I've been a blogger for Philosophy Talk ever since. And I'm really gonna miss Ken. And not only was he my mentor in Philosophy Talk, he was also my PhD advisor at Stanford. This loss has hit me really hard, but I'm always gonna say that I'm proud to have worked with Ken Taylor. My name is Carola Kratmeyer. I'm a professor of bioethics at UW-Madison. Ken wasn't only my teacher and my dissertation advisor, Ken and I shared a passion for theater. Years ago, when Ken found out that I write plays, he, maybe contrary to his better judgment, agreed to act in one of them, and he threw himself into that role. I will never forget how the audience just delighted in his performance of a loquacious small town mayor and and Ken owned that stage with his presence and his humor Ken truly believed that the project that is thrust upon you is that you have to fashion yourself you have to create yourself and that's what Ken did and through what he taught and through how he led by example he inspired many, including me, to aspire to that too. I'm, I'm gonna miss him very much.